This is an overview video of a attack downdraft gasification boiler, wood boiler with uh, 1,000 gallons of thermal storage. And this part of the video is going to cover the boiler and the boiler to storage plumbing. And we'll get a little closer to the boiler. It's an attack. 45 kilowatt rated boiler, 6.9 cubic foot firebox. Now that equates to about 153,000 BTU per hour in uh, US rating, I guess. So this is a uh, lambda controlled boiler, which means it has an oxygen sensor to monitor exhaust gases. That's the oxygen sensor and the exhaust stream. Uh, we also monitor the exhaust temperature via that probe there. Um, the lambda feature uh, means more computer control and automatic adjustment of the fuel uh, air inlet, excuse me, primary and secondary air inlets are motorized and controlled by the computer and the oxygen content of the exhaust. Uh, this offers a couple advantages. Um, no tweaking of uh, air, inlet, air inlets. And uh, so if your wood changes a little bit, you go to a soft wood for a while from a hard wood, uh, this will automatically adjust to give you the best uh, air to fuel ratio. It has another advantage in that uh, on shutdown, it closes the air off, air inlets off. To keep a coal bed for later refiring and also to minimize stack losses um, when, the, when the boiler is in the shutdown, you, you're not losing heat up the chimney. Uh, down here we have the lower chamber. Um, that's the refractory that the uh, flame shoots down into. You can see the uh, lower part of the nozzle where the flames come, come down. Uh, the firebox looks, looks like this. Fairly deep, 6.9 cubic feet. Uh, there is a, a bypass. Probably can't see it, but it's actuated by this lever. Automatically opens when the door is open. Um, that's to uh, help eliminate or reduce smoke spillage when you're on a reload. And speaking of smoke, smoke spillage, um, it can be a problem with certain boilers. Um, it's usually more of a problem with a forced, forced draft boiler. And this, is in a, this particular boiler is an induced draft, which means the fan that's moving air through the boiler is on the back of the boiler, uh, very close to the exhaust. So we're basically pulling air through the boiler. Air comes in the front in those uh, motorized air inlets. And uh, I've ver experienced very little sm smoke spillage with this boiler and that's a very nice feature if you install your boiler in, in your house, in your basement, where you don't really want to have any smoke spillage. Um, so I'm going to try to keep this video fairly short, so let's move on to some of the uh, boiler connections and piping. So back in the back of the boiler we have the outlet, the hot side, and we have the return, cold water return down here. Um, you'll notice I've got isolation valves. And also there's some union fittings hidden, hidden underneath the insulation. Uh, important to install isolation valves if you need to do some, uh, especially when I found a few leaks uh, in my solder work. Uh, it was very nice to isolate the boiler and just drain parts of the system to fix those leaks. So the upper of the boiler out here, up here, uh, we go to a T, and you'll notice there's a, a T's down to a uh, 
It's called a LK823. It's a uh, thermostatic, basically a mix valve that uh, the purpose of that is to return water to the boiler that's uh, 65 degrees Celsius or above. And that's called return uh, boiler protection. The goal is to keep that return water warm so we don't have a condensation problem within the boiler that could reduce its life. Uh, I have a circulation pump. Uh, this one is uh, Grunfos Alpha 2 pump. Nice little pump. It's an ECM circulator. Um, nice feature it has is I'm going to just manually switch it on. It has a nice little digital readout that uh, tells you a couple things. Uh, it tells you flow and it tells you power draw in watts. And I've found that to be particularly particularly useful if you have uh, a strainer in your system that gets that's slowly getting plugged up. Um, that you'll see the gallons per minute uh, drop off, and gives you an indicator that there's a problem. Uh, switch that back to boiler control. Boiler's not fired up, so it's not running the pump right now. So continuing on the outlet. Hot side, isolation valve, T. And just talked about the short circuit loop to provide return water, return temperature protection of the boiler. Now as the uh, boiler temperature comes up and the return water is maintained at 65 degrees Celsius, more water is diverted up to top of storage. And if we trace that along, uh, we have another item in the loop here that's a uh, taco air scoop that's for air removal and an automatic vent. And we continue on to uh, another isolation valve. And this is the top of the storage tanks. And we look at the bottom of the storage and where the return water Return water is coming from the very bottom of the tanks. Again, isolation valve. We have a fill drain valve. And we come back around to a, this is a dirt separator. This is a nice little unit that uh, is not susceptible to plugging up. And it does have a valve on the bottom. You can drain this and clean out the dirt with the system pressurized and in operation, no problem. And we're back to our return water boiler protection valve. And I kind of skipped over it, but on the bottom of the uh, air scoop, there's a smaller line that runs down over to an expansion tank. And since we have a thousand gallons, of thermal storage, we need a fairly large expansion tank. This is a pressurized system. Uh, this is a 119 gallon unit. Uh, it's actually a uh, accumulation tank for a well system, um, but they're very similar to an expansion tank for a boiler system. The only difference that I can tell is two things that are different. Um, the temperature rating is slightly lower. This one's rated at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, in my experience, the water entering, uh, because we have some piping in between it, it, it never reaches at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So we should be okay there as far as the temperature rating. Uh, and then the other difference is the factory pre-charge on a well pressure tank is usually set to about 40 PSI. And that can be adjusted. There's a valve on the top. It's like a... Like a adding or taking air out of a tire basically and you need to for a boiler system we I drop that down to about 8 psi and at this point I think I will stop this video and make part two to keep these videos fairly short